that guy. Just T-boned it there, didn't he? Come here. Hey everybody, welcome into this week's episode of Tony Spot on Fishing. I'm your host, Tony Krizek. Today's show, it's all about rolling with the punches and dealing with what Mother Nature's presenting to us. We've had an opportunity to try to do two or three different things today, but all kinds of storms in the area have made it hard. So what do you do when you just don't know what to do with the weather? Go hit some of your favorite ponds. There's still great fish to be caught. That's all this week on Tony's Spot on Fishing. So that first fish came on my old tried and true, Zara Spook Topwater. We've got some severe thunderstorms that are fixing to roll through here. You know, they're, they keep kind of pushing the times around changing it. We've had a couple little pop-up storms. Originally, we were gonna try to fish the, the Kankakee River today and film a show out there, but it was just too crazy a weather patterns to be bringing the boat out. So we said, you know, when you get these conditions, what is a guy to do? A little pond by the house, subdivision pond, farm pond, whatever you got. Bring a handful of rods with just to have a couple different baits. And you're probably gonna see us, you know, changing things up between a top water, a spinner bait, a wacky worm, a creature bait. So have a little bit of everything with you because as these fronts come and go, the wind patterns change, temp changes, it's supposed to be up to 90. Now we got a little bit of a cool breeze blowing. But when you get these overcast conditions like this, to me, there's nothing that'll beat the fish calling power of a topwater. It is always my go-to. And it's just fun watching them blow up on topwaters too. We're working that Zara Spook, cast it out, let the ripples disperse a little bit, just pause a few seconds, and then we can start working that Zara Spook. Short downward twitches of the rod, the reel is just there to pick up slack line. All the actions imparted strictly in the top, in the rod itself. Now we'll get that bait dancing side to side. And we got a little bit of a ripple to the water with the wind blowing. And anytime we get a little more water movement, I like to go to that full size Zara Spook with that one knocker rattle. Just a little more water displacement. That one knocker will really help call those fish up. Not to say that a, a, a Spook Junior or any of the smaller ones wouldn't work, but you definitely get a lot more noise and water displacement with that bigger size. Oh, mercy. Crush that spinner bait. This is what I was talking about, folks. Being versatile, that top water bite kind of died. We had one weak blow up after that fish we landed right off the bat. So go on to the next presentation. Come here, big girl. You are a horse. Yes. Oh, man, this is all what it's about. Rolling with the punches, ladies and gentlemen. Just because Mother Nature has got all kinds of weird weather and kind of changed our plans as far as getting out with the boat today. And we were dealing with various thunderstorms coming through. These subdivision ponds, farm ponds, all right in your neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen, are holding good quality fish like this. And sometimes it just takes a bad day where you're not gonna be able to go out and play with the boat. Bounce around these ponds, man, and bring a couple rods with, few baits, you're catching fish like this. I mean, that is just beautiful largemouth right there. We're gonna go ahead, we'll set her right on back in. But my goodness, just smoked it. And away she goes. So yeah, like I say, that top water bite died. Change it up a little bit. 
still chasing moving baits, actually running that spinner bait. One little thing we kind of did on this to tweak it, it's a half ounce spinner bait, comes with that number five blade, actually going down on that front blade to a four and a half. The reason being is if we were in thicker cover, thick vegetation, and I wanted to keep that bait up, I'd probably go three eighths ounce and the full size blades that come with it. Being that we have a little bit of clearance, a couple feet to the vegetation, I want it to ride just above it. And that's where going to a half ounce and changing that front blade, I can run that spinner bait right on through it. Versatility. When Mother Nature keeps throwing you lemons, make some lemonade. That's what it's all about. So our camera guy decided to run a Texas rig Senko. Another little trick there with it though. Small little 130 second ounce bullet weight. So you just get a little more head dive to it. And especially when you're fishing these isolated clumps and pitching down the rock shorelines, it'll just kind of get a little bit of a head sweep to the sinko rather than just the slow horizontal fall. It'll almost kind of go down at an angle and sometimes if that free sliding 30 second ounce bullet weight gets up the line enough, it'll actually shoot it down and you can actually get that sinko to dart down. Just one other little thing we can do when we're under these weather conditions to get a couple extra bites. You know, through the magic of editing of this program, it may seem like we're just one after another out here, but this is, this is working for it. Like I say, three thunderstorms in and some doozies coming on the way. So, gosh, it seems it's just been nothing but a grind for us lately with the weather, but that's just exactly what it is. There's no better way to describe it, but if you can grind it out, you're gonna catch some fish. Well, now that is a doozy. The joys of throwing into a little stiffer breeze. Line gets twisted all up with the blades. Well, while I'm straightening things out here, let's go ahead and take a look at a special clip from an interview we did with the Brianne Contario Foundation board members. And they're gonna tell you a little bit about their great organization. And we're gonna tell you about this great tournament we got coming up on September 8th. Hey everybody, here we are at the Des Plaines Conservation Area talking about a big event that's going to be going down Saturday, September 8th. A benefit for the Brianne Contiero Foundation. With me are two of the board members here. Brandy, thank you so much for being here. Terry, of course, thank you so much. And thank you so much for allowing Spot on Fishing to be a part of the event and, and help bring this to our viewers and talk about all the great work that you guys are doing with your foundation and about this tournament. She was 12 years younger than me and growing up she was kind of like my personal doll. Her grandmother lived right next to me and they, her family would come over, do yard work and Brie came to me. In describing Brie, I'd use three words. She was compassionate, uh, inspirational and also a hero. In January of 2012, uh, Brie became a hero for many people who had thought they had no hope. She was an organ and tissue donor, and through her organs, there were five people. And with her tissue, there was countless others that thought they didn't have hope, and they now do have hope. With me right now is Brianne's mom, Terry, who is the head of this whole organization. She um, was studying to be a nurse down in Kansas City, and upon her angel day, she was an organ donor. She saved five people's lives with the you know, gift of life by donating. And we just want to um, move it forward, or, you know, give, give back to the community. And um, yeah, and our mission is uh, to educate and bring the awareness of organ donation and the importance of it and how it can save lives. The fishing tournament is gonna to be our first annual. It's our inaugural, inaugural year, and we appreciate your sponsorship. And that's gonna be here at the Des Plaines River, um, at Kankakee, and that's gonna be September 8th, so we're looking forward to that as well. 60 boats, the Kankakee River, and the Des Plaines River, all the information, the prize money, the spots, the payouts, everything will be up there for you guys to read. And of course, we're gonna have some good food that day I hear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Once again, September 8th, 2018, Des Plaines Conservation Center. That is where it is going down. We're gonna be fishing the Kankakee River, the Des Plaines River, and the DuPage River. 
For more information on how you can get in, we'll have the links to the website with the entry forms in the video description below here, ladies and gentlemen. Only limited to 60 boats. It's filling up. So get your entries in. Guaranteed payouts, $5,000 total in prize money, paying out through the top 10 spots. For $150 a team entry fee, you're gonna get a great meal. Gonna be able to fish against the spot on fishing crew. We'll be out there being a part of the tournament. Also have our camera crews on hand documenting everything. So you could even be in an episode of Tony's Spot on Fishing. That's a pretty sweet deal and it's all for a great cause. Little guy. Camera guy jinxed us here. He's talking about how no dinks. He had to say it. Because now we get a little guy. He may be small, but they're all fun. Under conditions like this, man, I'll take it. It's just a fish. Beats sitting on the couch. Whoa, acrobatic. Oh, you're holding on by the trailer hook. Come here. Yeah. Well, that is the importance, ladies and gentlemen, of that trailer hook. Because without that, I would not have landed that fish. It's a good redemption fish after that little dink. A little on the thin side, but hey, it's all right. Set him on back. It is definitely a spinnerbait kind of day. That's the best part about throwing a spinnerbait. You can just cover water and play around with some different speeds and you'll find active fish. To me, it is by far and away the most important tool any angler can have in his tackle box. Oh, that bite changing a little bit here, folks. Wow, look at how this one's hooked. I just said that one sucked it in and that spinnerbait is gone. <laughs> man, oh man. All right, I'm getting it out. I'll get you. It's not down his throat, it's just in the top of his mouth. But this is hard with all of this extraness of a spinnerbait. There we go. Another little guy. He just wanted it real bad. I don't think necessarily that they were getting a little more sluggish. He just engulfed that spinnerbait. Hence why I felt like he just sucked it in there. Boy, that one must have followed it in. Because he ended up eating it. I saw him come running in and charging it. Came running from out in the open, right up to the shore to grab it at that last second. There we go. Another nice one there. Well... That sun is starting to peek through the clouds and we're starting to feel the heat a little bit here and there. I believe the weatherman was right when he said it's gonna get up to about 90. And I think that's about the end of the road for us because right behind this is that big wall and another round of thunderstorms. But hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us again. We hope we're able to shed some light on how you can beat mother nature and find yourself still catching some fish even if you have to dodge some storms fish these little subdivision ponds in your neighborhood i'll tell you what spinnerbait a topwater a plastic you're going to be surprised how many fish and how many big fish you find right in your own backyards once again ladies and gentlemen my name is tony krizek we'll see you next time on tony spot on fishing